All right, so I've got my basic chords recorded. I'm going to um, begin to add more layers on top of those chords to make uh, the song more musically rich and add other notes into the mix uh, than just these these sort of two two finger chords that we've got going right now. Uh, so first things first, I'm actually going to duplicate this track. Um, so that we can have a copy of it and edit the copy to kind of easily uh, create things like bass lines um, and other chords. Uh, anyways, here's what I'm going to do. Click on this gear wheel right here and choose duplicate track to make a duplicate of this track. And then I need to duplicate the track again because I'm going to make a bass line and I'm going to make another kind of more high pitched um, sound that's going to enhance the sound that we've got going right now. Now if I just hit play on this now, these three Rhodes pianos, these three Rhodes keyboards will just sort of be louder. But I don't want that. I want to find a brand new sound for this. So, let's see, what do I want? Oh, there's something I know I want. I need a bass line. So I've chosen pump bass. Um, I'm going to quickly and easily change these chords into a bass line. So right now they'll be too high pitched. Right? That sounds nothing like a bass line. So what I need to do is lower those notes by an octave or maybe two octaves. Now, a keyboard, if you count the notes on a keyboard, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12 before on the 13th note the pattern repeats itself notice that this group of notes um, with two black keys there three black keys there looks the exact same as these ones right if you ignore the letters and numbers on the front of them so those are all C notes but they're C notes on different octaves so this one's low this one is in the middle, this one's high, and we could even go higher or lower from there. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go down a few octaves and have a bass line down there, or maybe there. So how do I do that? On here, it's pretty easy, actually. Um, here's my pump bass. This is what I want to be my bass line. So I click on Edit, and I don't want Quantize. I want Change Pitch. And this wheel comes up. We can grab this wheel and turn this down by 12 semitones, and that'll make it an octave lower, which will turn it into a bass line. Let's see how that sounds. All right. Let's change pitch again and do another 12 and see how that sounds. Terrible, right? It's terrible because bass lines... Um, typically are not chords. They're not two notes, they're not three notes. Basses typically only play one note at a time. Because as soon as you start to play a chord on a bass, things can tend to sound really messy, really nasty. So, I need to get rid of some of these notes in here. And to get rid of some of the notes in my bass line, I'm gonna click on this piano roll button. Next to edit is the piano roll button. I click on that, and this comes up. This is called the piano roll. The piano roll is a mixture of a grid that shows all the beats and the measures going from left to right and from top to bottom all the notes on the piano. On a piano roll you can typically double click to add notes and click on them and hit backspace to delete notes to get rid of notes. And so you can actually sort of draw in a melody or a beat this way instead of playing them yourself while you're recording. But I will tell you it's a lot quicker to just play it live and quantize it. Anyways, let's make this bass line. Um, first things first, I have to choose for every chord that gets played, I have to choose which note I want to play on the bass alongside of it. I'm starting with the root note, the C. And then I'm gonna jump up here. And then it'll go back to C again. So all I got to do is delete the ones I don't want. I don't want the, oh, I do want that C, so I don't want this guy. 
I don't want this C or this C or this C. And that's it. Let's do that again. What about this time, though? Yeah, I'm going to jump from here. So I'm getting rid of the C so I can jump from here, down to here, up to here. So I'm getting rid of this guy and this guy. All right, so let's hear that. Alright, a couple things. Um, it turns out, I think I want to go back to the C here. It's just a little bit smoother, in my opinion, so I'm doing that. The other thing is, I want the bass line to last for the entire measure, and I want these notes to not have any gaps in between them, the way that the Rhodes does. So, I can just click on the end of them, like, I can click on the end of the note and just drag it out until it fills the whole measure in. Like that. Just grab and drag. So let's try, let's try that. What's that sound like? By the way, I want to turn this guy down. So here's a volume knob right here that allows me to just turn it down so it's not so loud in my mix. It's kind of overpowering everything else. So I've turned it down. Let's hear what it sounds like now. There's my melody and my bass line, my chords and my bass line. And now um, I'm just going to very quickly and easily add a second um, set of chords over the top of this one. And to do that, I'm going to choose a different instrument. I'm going to do almost the exact same thing I did for the bass. I'm going to choose a different instrument. I already know what I want. I want the synthesizer that's called Sample and Hold because I like the sound of it. Let's see. Hopefully I can find it. There it is. Sample and hold. And I want to make it higher pitched by one octave. So I'm clicking edit and I'm clicking change pitch and I'm turning it up by 12 semitones, which are semitones are just another uh, word for the keys on a keyboard. Um, all right. 